Hello everyone and welcome back to another video and this is about the Intel Arc A770 and A750 PCB. So the card has been out for quite a while. I've actually been planning to do this video for a long time but then kind of didn't. Um, so I've, I've, had, I've waited for a long time to, for someone else to do this kind of video but no one else did so I'm doing it now because I really like the A770 and A750 PCB. It is a lot better, or like a lot more capable for overclocking than um, my Google just activated for some reason. Um, it is like very capable for a reference PCB. And I know there's custom cards for these. I haven't really seen good PCB pictures of these yet. By the way, these pictures are from Tech Power Up, and I'm using the article for telling you which components are on this. So huge thanks for them for just putting that out there on the internet. This is really, really useful information. Um, so go look up their uh, review if you want to see it for yourself. Um, but yeah, like I, I like what Intel made here. I like this PCB because this is very different from the sort of like bare minimum, at least it runs stock clocks and doesn't explode PCB that you usually get, at least for Nvidia. AMD kind of also had pretty good reference PCBs, though as of late, like the 1600 XT, really, really bad input filter, really holding it back, and a lot of the custom cards repeat that mistake. But yeah, um, let's take a look at this card. So um, yeah, uh, the 770 and 750 PCB are mostly the exact same. There's like one very small difference of like one additional debug header being on the 770. Other than that, you get the exact same PCB for the 750 and 770. And yeah, let's get right into it. So, um, there is going to be a little bit of guesswork involved because there's no data sheets. <laughs> like the controllers just don't show up uh, if you look for them. And there's not specifically a convention how to name um, VRMs on this yet. So I'm gonna use AMD uh, naming scheme as specifically 28 nanometer AMD naming scheme because this card has two memory voltages and we'll get into that later. But first, let's talk about our, well, that's way too thin. Let's talk about our vCore VRM, which is this right over here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six phases, which, you know, is fine. The 770 pulls below 250 watts. Um, like a six phase is what Nvidia put on the 780 and the 780 Ti and the 980 Ti, which uh, did like 275 watts with the stock PCB and custom cards did in excess of 300 watts. Uh, and that six phase was significantly weaker than this one. So yeah, <laughs> so this is a six phase and you can see there's these two options for additional phases. So this could be up to an eight phase. Um, and you know, there might be a custom card for this that uses those extra two phases, or it might just be a completely custom design, but Intel decided to not use the full eight phase configuration. They just went for six, which I guess is fine. Um, it would have been cool to see eight, but I think the six phase on this will be fine. The PWM controller for this, oh no wait, it's not on the back. It is actually this right here. Um, yeah, so this is the PWM controller for the uh, VCore VRM and this is an MP2979. And as I mentioned before, there are no data sheets. <laughs> I cannot find a data sheet. I cannot tell you how many phases this does, how much, how high the switch frequency goes, what other features it has. We can kind of only guess. Um, my first guess is that this is an eight phase. It does support two outputs at least, and it has I2C. Those are my assumptions because we have this very suspiciously looking I2C header on the back which uh, coincidentally also exists for the other MP2979 on this card. Um, so yeah, so I'm assuming it's an eight phase because there's just an option for eight phases on this. Uh, I assume it does I2C because of that header there. And I assume it does dual output because there is another MP2979 with another I2C pad right next to it that controls the other two memory voltages on the card. So yeah. 
Then for the power components, this is another monolithic uh, power systems part. This is an MP86956. Uh, this is officially a Diamos and it's rated for 70 amps. Or up to 70 amps. If you actually try to push 70 amps through all of these at the same time, your VRM will very, very quickly overheat. Um, the current rating is more of like an efficiency rating, like the amount of power that you can push through a 50 and a 60 and a 70 amp power component is basically the same because they're all going to become uncoolable at basically the same level, but the 70 amp one is going to be very slightly more efficient, which is, which also goes for like 90 and 100 and 120 amp components. Um, like it, it doesn't increase the amount of power that you can push through a phase, it just makes the phases more efficient. So they take slightly longer to overheat, uh, is basically the thing. Um, and yeah, I also can't really tell you anything more than that, that they're rated for 70 amps, because I also couldn't find a data sheet for this. So, no idea what switching frequency this does, it just does 70 amps. Um, which, you know, is fine, because all those NVIDIA cards I talked about had 50 amp DRMOSs. Not that those didn't blow up, they did, but this is 70 amps on a card that pulls less power, has a smaller memory bus, and just generally is more efficient. So this VRM is probably fine. Then for the other two VRMs, we have we have one VRM over here, which I'm gonna call VDDCI. I have no idea what it is actually called, but I'll just call it VDDCI because it kind of looks like the VDDCI rail on an AMD card. And then over here, we have another VRM, which is actually kind of split in two. This is both the same VRM, and I'm going to call this VMEM, because that's probably the memory voltage. So what I'm suspecting is that VMEM powers the actual memory chips around the GPU core, and I assume that VDDCI powers the memory controller, which is like along the outer edge of the die, which is how AMD does it. Um, NVIDIA doesn't do this because NVIDIA doesn't have a VDDCI rail. They have a core and a memory rail and that's it. Um, so NVIDIA's memory controller, as far as I know, is just powered off the uh, memory rail as well. Um, but on AMD, they have had a VDDCI rail specifically for the memory controller. And I assume that this extra memory rail on the Intel card has a very similar function. Um, that's my assumption. So. As for these, uh, as I said before, both of these are controlled by another MP2979 that is on the back. Um, but the power chips are actually different on this one. So both these VRMs uh, use different uh, DRMOSs because they use MP89, no, 86. 86950s, and these are 50 amp DRMOSs. So it's probably a cost optimization thing, because like your a 256-bit memory bus or memory controller probably doesn't need two 70 amp power phases. So it will be fine on 50 amp. Uh, 50 amp components are cheaper than 70 amp components. Probably a cost-cutting measure. Um, so, yeah, these use slightly less powerful DRMOSs, it will still be fine. <laughs> um, and, yeah. Then, uh, we have this chip. No, I said, then we have this chip, which, uh, is for HDMI 2.1. It converts the display port signal to HDMI, that's what TechPowerUp says, and I'm just going to take it for it. Um, if you were wondering what this is. And yeah, that's pretty much all that the tech pop article says. Now we can do a bit more guesswork right here, or we can just tell a bit more about the card by looking at it because we haven't talked about filtering yet. So let me get rid of all of this. And yeah, so the front looks kind of sad when it comes to output filtering. There's some multi-layer ceramics, but they are very small and very low in number. Um, we do have these SMD polymers, um, one per phase actually for, well on the front, one per phase for the uh, memory rail. 
uh, and then like you know another couple more to last ceramics and then that's it but where the filtering really does look great is on the back so another mode uh, SMD polymer for each of the memory phases another two uh, SMD polymers for uh, each of the VDDCI phases and then this just absolute packed thing full of V-Core filtering. Um, now how many are these? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These are 16 470 microfarad SMD polymers. So this isn't just 330s as you usually see, this is actually 470s and all of these are 470s. So Intel's using the good stuff, and even these behind the core are 470s. So you have a lot of output capacitance relative to the power consumption of this card. Like, that's a lot of output filter, and I really like seeing that. Um, like, I, yeah, it, it, it's just... It's just an amazing output filter. You like, I don't think that cap modding this card does anything because it already has so much output filtering. You see, there actually was an option to have even more input filtering. Um, they already have a good amount of input filtering right here. And then, actually, do they have input filtering? Yeah, they have some input filtering over here for the memory rails. Um, but yeah, like, the input side looks fine, output side looks really good. I really like the output filter on this. I, yeah, I, I like it. And, uh, yeah. And then we can do a bit more guesswork. So, um, I would love to have one of these cards in hand to verify that, but uh, I had the choice to either buy an A750 or a 1080 Ti. If you look at my channel, you'll know that I went for the 1080 Ti because it's a bit more of a usable card and also cheaper than an A750 and also faster. So, yeah, unless I magically somehow get an A750 or an A770, uh, I won't be able to verify any of this. But if you are going to overclock this, first of all, what you would do is, of course, you would use the I2C interface, which th this probably is I2C, like, that's a very I2C looking header. The um, MP2979 probably supports I2C, there might even already be a EVC profile for it. Um, so if you hook your EVC up to this, you'll already have voltage control, probably control for switching uh, frequency, OCP, and whatnot. Um, like, th those MPS controllers, are usually pretty good. Like, um, I, I've seen them on a lot of very high-end, very good cards. So, yeah. Uh, they, they will probably have quite a lot of IQC functionality. So you would hook up to those to get your voltage control. And then the next biggest problem would be power. So this card does have a power limit and in some videos that went into overclocking this card, I actually saw that it does run into the power limit quite hard if you try to overclock it. Like, it looks like there's a lot of more scaling to be had, but the card just can't boost anymore because it's in the in the power limit. Um, and I have a theory as to how you probably can lift the power limit. Because there's these things on the board and these look like fuses, and I first thought they are fuses, but look at the marking, it says R, and for this one, it also says R on the PCB. R means resistor, as in shunt resistor. So these might be shunt resistors, and they are only on the external inputs. The PCI Express slot doesn't have one. A possible reason for that might be that PCI Express only powers the two memory rails, and then the 8-pin and the 6-pin only power core, since the core ray is the most power-hungry one and the one that fluctuates the most, um, it would make sense to, like, if you, you probably don't need to power monitor the memory a lot, because the power consumption of that don't, doesn't really change that much. Um, 
the one on the core, however, does. Um, and I have a theory that these might be shunt resistors. So you can maybe shunt mod this card in the same way how you can shunt mod an NVIDIA card, which would be a very easy way to get rid of the power limit. Now you could also just like, the custom cards probably have a higher power limit and you can probably just flash a custom card BIOS onto this, which would extend the power limit somewhat. But by shunt modding the card, you can like double the power limit. And there's probably not a card that has like a 450 watt limit. So yeah, that's my theory as to how you can power mod this. Now, I obviously don't have the card and I don't think anybody has tried this yet, but that looks suspiciously like a shunt resistor, uh, like power monitoring circuit. I don't really know which chip on the card is the actual power monitor though. It might be that it's integrated into the PWM controllers. It might be that it's integrated into the GPU because like th that's probably the BIOS chip. And then Actually, that might be the bias chip. Maybe one of these two is power monitoring, but I don't think so. It's kind of a weird spot to have power monitoring in. Uh, I, I guess the power monitoring is probably integrated into the either the PWM controller or the GPU. So you can't really remove it uh, like you do on like some old Nvidia cards to get rid of the power limit. Um, but shunt modding the card might still work. So if anybody has a card that they want to experiment on, I guess try this. So, yeah. And that's basically everything that I wanted to say about the A770 and A750. Honestly, I kind of hope that there would be more content covering this because like, you know, it's first gen hardware. It's not that fast. It's not that great for price to performance but you know it's first gen hardware it's always a bit meh but i just really like the pcb that they put together and from what i can tell the card is really like has a lot of scaling in it for overclocking um so like in, in a couple of years i probably will pick up one of these and and, and try things on it um for now i can only look at pictures and talk about it uh, unless I get somehow I get a card. I don't think I will, but you know, you never know. Um, but yeah, I like this PCB. I, I like what Intel put together. I would also love to take a look at custom cards, but again, I haven't seen any good pictures of those yet. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of... I kind of wish that there would be more Intel GPU overclocking content. Like, I've seen someone tried it on LN2. Um, didn't really see much of it though. Um, so, I mean, some people are trying it. And yeah, let, let's just end the video. So, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And until next time, goodbye.